six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> what is going on what is going on people it's Thursday so you know it's time for the prem panel show what is going on everyone uh big up the panel man how you boys doing oh, good bless good. man bless sorry Aaron I had to do it bro <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all good, it's all good man. I had to do it what I told you I, I hate have to doing it, it to people I like. I hate doing it to people I like, but I've, you got it. We can't win five nil at OT, and that's not and and it doesn't come up. It, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not possible, man. But no, big up everyone. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone in the um, comments. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Do you know what I mean? And uh, let's just jump straight in. So the weekend's game, we've got to get out of the way, as I said. We've just got to get it out of the way. And that was a couple of days ago, but I'm going to probably glow about this for the rest of my life. Um, so obviously, KG George, as the neutral, do you know what I'm saying? We had a little talk backstage about it or whatnot. So KG, I'll come to you first. From your point of view watching that game, what was your thoughts, the emotions? What was you thinking? Like, How was you like feeling about that game as it unfolded? Yeah, listen, I expected Liverpool to win the game, but not in that manner. And when you consider the whole game on the whole, you guys could have won that 7-8 and no one would have been surprised with the way that you guys were playing. You actually took your, 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 your foot off the gas in the last half an hour, which I think you shouldn't have. Because as a neutral, it would have been more interesting to see him get beat 7-8, you know, just as a neutral, of course. But listen, Salah, as, as everyone knows, best right now, best around. He's doing it in all the big games. Uh, consistent. You just you're just confident when the guys in front of goal. I said this a few weeks ago, but when he's playing, you just expect him to score. Now that that's that's what you call somebody who you can rely on all the time. Mm. Um, listen, it it could have been a it could have been a a greater score. Man United were poor, but that doesn't take away that you guys beat them in pretty much third gear. Mm. No fair dude, George. How did you feel about it watching that unfold, bro? I mean, it yeah, must have been a little bit harder for you, bro, because you were just before us, so you was probably annoyed. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean that was like fresh, fresh from the wounds of our West Ham. Yeah, family. yeah. But um, well, I mean, got got to see like a proper proper team actually win a game <laughs> and see what goals actually look like because <laughs> it's a bit dry for us right now seeing that. But I was the only one that called the clean sheet for Liverpool as well last week. I fair play. Did, play. Did, play. did actually yeah. did fair play, bro. nobody could have seen a clean sheet I'm not going to lie that was probably more surprising <laughs> than the five goals but no honest. yeah I think mm. the five was something I, I wasn't quite expecting like even though I did say a clean sheet last week I, I was still half expecting like you know Ronaldo the typical Ronaldo to pop up with a goal here and there which he obviously nearly did um, mm. until it was ruled out but um, no man I mean that was just a, annihilation from Liverpool and like, and like KG said it could have <laughs> easily been more and I thought it was going to be more but yeah for some reason stepped off the gas a little bit. I mean, yeah, just to say that before I come to Aaron, obviously, Matt, I'll just quickly um, ask you if you feel this because I was talking to the boys behind um, behind the scenes before we started and I was saying to them that I feel like we maybe took our foot off the gas because we started to get worried about injuries a little because Man United were being so aggressive. It was becoming a point where, I mean, obviously, Ronaldo could have hurt um, Jones. Jones. Then Bruno could have really hurt Jones just after. Then Fred yeah, yeah. kicked Naby in the face. Then Pogba assaulted Naby. And it's like, at that point, you're like, well, hold on a minute. All right, we might actually get some real bad injuries. You know what yeah. we're like after last season? Like, we start, I think, I reckon we panicked a bit. What do you think? And just thought, you know, if we stop pumping them, they'll stop fouling us. That That's kind of how I've looked on it, reflecting. Like, what do you think? I think there was kind of like that element of... Um... 
yeah, let's just slow it down a bit because we've won the game is 5-0. I'm not only that, we don't want to pick up more injuries. And as you said, yeah, when I saw Naby Keita get assaulted, I was like, yeah, do you know what? We just got to slow down there because we already lost Milner at that point as well. And then, and then obviously losing Naby and we're already light in midfield. And I was generally thinking, like, because these lot were aggressive from day. And to be fair, you're supposed to be because mm-hmm. it's Liverpool versus Man United. It's, it's not going to be no soft game. Like, it's a derby. It's the biggest game in English football, in my opinion. So you're going to have, you know, the challenges that can be a bit mm-hmm. reckless, but there were far too many for my liking. And what happened is the referee was allowing the game to just kind of go along a bit too much. And some of the challenges, I was like, no, nah, ref, like, come on, this is getting a bit mad because Fred was mad aggressive in this game. And that, you know, that's kind of to be expected. But at the same time, if if a player goes over the line, a referee's got to kind of show, man, like, this is not how you play football, mate. Like, there's been aggressive and then there's been uncontrollable. And there mm. just was a couple of challenges where I thought, yeah, that's a bit much, bro. But again, they kind of got what they deserve in a sense of, if you're going to be that aggressive with us, we're just going to play ball. And what's so mad is when my, when um when Bruno had that first chance, I remember was watching the... um the live stream, and I said, mm. all we have to do right now is just play ball. And I guarantee you, I said, once we play ball, we'll give them problems. And what happened? 5 nil, bro. So, yeah, mm. man. Looking back on the game and reflection, though, Man United did have about two or three really good opportunities, you know, that I forgot about watching it live. Like, I watched Bruno's back, I was like, at the beginning. Rah, they actually mm, did yeah. have a cut. Like, Rashford had a very good um, opportunity. Yes, I think Ronaldo did. in the first half had a good chance and he skied it as well. Then he obviously yes. scored the goals outside. So I was looking back and I was like, "Raw, we actually did give them quite a bit of joy, even though we played well. Like, it was still a bit worrying that they still had opportunities that they just snatched at. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think yeah. defensively, what it is, defensively, we wasn't amazing. But I think attacking-wise, mm. we were a lot better. Like, it seemed that we could carve them open at any opportunity. And that's... That was for me where the game was won because, as you said, we allowed them to have chances. It's just that like they didn't take them. Especially, man, imagine if Bruno scores that first chance. It might be mm. a slightly different oh, game. Totally different game. Totally. So I, I mean, mean, obviously, we were still ca- capable of probably opening them up, but I then the so, crowd yeah. would have been up for it. Everybody, you know, and maybe that old Trafford hoodoo might have come over us like it normally does when we like yeah, play true, the occasion true. rather than playing right. the game. You never know. Um, but before I come to you, Aaron, just quickly, we actually reached out to Ronaldo to get some comments on that whole, you know, kicking up Jones and stuff. Uh, this is what he had to say. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 I mean, can, I, can I just say something as well? Yeah, I'm go, now, go to I've, I've heard this narrative all week with the British press and ex players that couldn't even lace Ronaldo's boots, even at 36 years old, about this thing about him not being pressing and running oh, and yes. all this stuff. This old British blood and thunder guts needs to be shown and everything else like that. Listen, all you need to do is give Ronaldo the ball and he'll score the goals. Let the other people on the pitch take care of all the running. That's how it used to be back in the day too with, with poacher strikers. But now everyone needs to be running around like a headless chicken. bit like you saw on the press for your first goal. They were they looked like they were pressing, but they weren't. They were just running for the sake of looking like they were running. That's true. And, That's true. and, and that, there's no point doing that. You've got to press and make it count. Yeah. And not every great team presses right now. Chelsea don't press like that either. So all this stuff about Ronaldo is now suddenly a problem. One of the best players to ever play the game is a problem. Only in this country they can do that, by the way. Take one of the best players to ever play the game and say that he's the problem uh, and not everything else around him. Crazy. Yes, I know I'm the Ronaldo defence league right here, yeah? But it, it, it's, it's, it's actually driven me nuts oh, this week. It's, it's driven me nuts this week about this whole, you know, this whole pressing like thing. It's crazy. You know, the only obviously I'm going to bring Aaron in because Aaron is the best person to ask about this. But you know, the only thing I'll say on that, KG, that like I fully agree with you. Like I think as a striker, the only job you have is to score a goal. And I think a lot of people have been sucked into the idea that if the striker, because come on, we grew up on your bat stooters, your Christian Vieri's, your big run, like they would do nothing, but they'd get the winning yeah. goal because that was their job. Yeah. And I think you're yeah. right. People have been sucked into like this thing of like, if you play number nine, I think it's the only position on the pitch you can get away with low work rate as long as you're banging in goals. Because yeah, yeah, job and, that, and that's it. And if you know, look, goals, look you at Berbatov, Berbatov was a criminal. yeah, Berbatov, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never Berbatov ran didn't yeah. run around. Imagine, goals, imagine so asking, cool. imagine asking Berbatov to run around, but then, but then you take away all of that silkiness he gives you when he's got the ball, 
Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Not everyone needs to run around like a headless chicken for no reason. Agreed, and just yeah. because they clock up 20 kilometers in the game doesn't mean they've had a good game either. So mm. people just need to relax with that calma, as, as Ronaldo would tell you. Calma, yeah. yeah. The only thing I'll say, though, and this is when I'll bring you in, Aaron, obviously, because it's time for you to have your say in this game. Um, even though, obviously, what KG said is bang on the money, could the problem be, though, it's not Ronaldo in the game that's the problem. It is that Oli had a way he wanted to play this season and Ronaldo was forced on him. And the way he wanted to play, Ronaldo doesn't fit. Could that more be what the problem is rather than what Ronaldo actually brings when he's in the game? Um, I do think... Because I hate this a lot. Like, oh, Ronaldo was forced on him. I think he wanted Ronaldo. As soon as he knew that he was available on the market, remember that press conference? You think he, so, yeah? Yeah, he like, publicly you, you... came out and said, if Ronaldo wants to come back to England, he knows we're here. So from the moment you say that, for me, you want him. You want him 100%. And now, you, def you definitely don't think that was anything to do with it being City? Like, say, for example, it was MLS or somewhere that was about to sign Ronaldo. Do you think he yeah. would have cared? Like, is it because it was City why you had to make that feeling, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. If he, we just wanted to prevent him from, from going to Man City. Um, but mm. at the same time, Oli wanted him. So, yeah, that's that. But um, I think the issue with Ronaldo is Oli playing him the wrong way as well. Now that he's here, you might as well use him the wrong way. And you might as well use the right tactics to accommodate someone like Ronaldo. I said it last week as well. <clears throat> I used um, the Portugal Island game as an example. You're going to have to feed him because he's the type of guy who's just going to stay in the box and just feed off your crosses. Um, but you see the goal that he scored against you guys. That was like a throwback Ronaldo from Real Madrid. And that's the type of positions you need to be, you need to make sure that he's in, like an inverted winger role kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? If he's mm. in them positions and you give him the ball, he can produce that little bit of skill, get away from his man and then shoot and then score. So, mm. but we're using him the complete wrong way, man. We're playing him as a lone striker, something he's never done in his career. Yeah. Not at Juve, not at Real Madrid, definitely not at Man United in his first spell, not at um, Sporting Lisbon, and definitely not with Portugal. Even with Portugal, he plays as a striker on paper, but he's still in that inverted winger kind of role from the left, drifting in and then shooting, or just being in a box when uh, a cross comes in or a set piece. So we're definitely using him the wrong way. Fair play. Let me just get through a couple of these super chats just quick. Uh, Pete, big up yourself, bro. Uh, Nabi went to OT, got um got a goal assist, dive to get Pogba sent, dive to get Pogba sent off. My days, oh, my. <laughs> I think it was dashed in the air myself. But um, uh, and a week later, he's back in full training. My legend, Oli at the wheel. Don't let this man go. Uh, I, I don't think there's anyone who's not Oli, and to be honest. Um, <laughs> breaking news after much reflection, Skulls is leaving punditry. To <laughs> I'm not gonna say that last bit, but you lot can read. <laughs> oh man, right, so I'm not even gonna. Skulls is getting lit up like he's actually, <laughs> you know, just, just quickly. I mean, I know it doesn't really matter too much, but as a whole, guys, here, do we care too much about the shame, or should it even be shame on the club if a legend? does something crazy. Like, should Man United be feeling the shame of Gary Neville saying things that people don't agree with? Paul Scholes doing what he... Like, or is it like, you know what, they used to play for us, but it's got nothing to do with us. Like, how do we feel about that whole punditry thing with these men embarrassing themselves? I mean, Aaron, he's, 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 you're a legend, so I'll mm. let you answer. It's association, this though, isn't it? I think that's yeah, so, what it mm. comes down to. Yeah, ask your question again, sorry. You see, like, Gary Neville saying things that are making it obvious that he's being biased. Scholes is... Is, is sucking toes and madness and all that. Like, do you think it should be a reflection in your team because it's your legend? Or is it like, nah, 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 man. Like, he's over there now, isn't it? Like, he don't play for us no more. Uh, well, they're, they're still associated with Man United. So anything they do, it's going to be highlighted. So whether they're playing or not. Um, so are they bringing it's, shame it's, on United, do you think, at the moment? Of course they are, man. When you do things like this and it goes viral, of course you're bringing shame to the club, man. It's, it's embarrassing, man. You're gonna, if you're going to do that, do that in private, but... And tell your daughter not to film it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I think it's bad parenting more than anything. Now, yeah, you know, sure. film I mean, that funny story. Know, madness, bro. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. I did think that to myself. Um, I really did. Uh, Lord Walker here says uh, Ronaldo knows he's captain of Titanic. Uh, <laughs> do you know? Is that a problem? 
Aaron as well, that he's not the captain. And again, I don't want to make this a Ronaldo thing because KG's right. A lot of people are putting it on Ronaldo and it's like, there's so much other problems. It's not a Ronaldo problem, really, even though he's part of the problem. Could that be a thing though? Maguire, I look at that team and I think there's a lot of people who don't listen to Maguire. And I'm I'm, I'm making assumptions here, which is wrong. But I look at a Bruno, I look at a, um, I look at a Ronaldo, I look at a Cavani. These are winners. They've been winning. They know what it takes to win. And I think, Sometimes people like that might look at a, a, a Maguire and go, leader of what? Like, how is he the leader? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, is that a problem, your captaincy thing with, with the leadership within? Even Pogba, surely even Pogba will look at Maguire and go, why is he captain? Like, bro, one million percent. I still don't understand how Harry Maguire was able to come in, completely overthrow the hierarchy of the team, and then become the captain. We're talking. I'm talking about people that have won stuff, Premier Leagues, World Cups, Champions Leagues, Europa Leagues, even someone like a Matic. I'd put him before Maguire to be the captain because Matic got bags of experience with Chelsea, with us, with Benfica. Like, he's Matic has there. won everything, right? Hasn't he's he won, won everything? I think Matic has won everything, yeah. Champions League, Premier League, FA Cup, he's won it all. Yeah, he's won it all. So yeah. I'd, put, I'd put him, I'd give him the armband before I gave it to Maguire. So... Oli just giving it to Maguire completely disrespects all the other teammates in, in, in the squad. Um, mm. And Harry Maguire is not a leader. He's never been, whether it was a Leicester, Hull City, Sheffield United, he's never been a leader. He's been relegated four times. You're not going to, you don't become a leader by getting relegated four times. I'm sorry. Four? Four times, yeah. I thought I think it was only with Hull, wasn't it? I no, said this I, from day, you know. He's it's really it's either, it's, wow. it's about it's, but it's either three or four relegated squads. Three or four. Yeah. But don't you no think more. like his his like maturity and the fact that out of a lot of the ones you said, because obviously this is we're talking like pre-Ronaldo coming and Bruno coming, he was the only kind of mature player that actually was going to play consistently. Matic wasn't playing consistently, so you couldn't give him the captain armband all week. Mm. Obviously, Ooh. Bruno's a fairly recent sign in. Ronaldo is a very, very recent signing. And even you see seeing now, Pogba's in and out of the team all the time as well. Like, who else is there for, to be your captain? Maybe De Gea? Which is like, That's would what you I was going to say. I would have given yeah, yeah. De Gea. But then De Gea. De Gea, when we lost to Newcastle two years ago, I think two seasons ago, away 1-0, he came out and said something like, um, it's been happening for a long time, something along those lines, and then you lost the captaincy. So clearly, um, yeah, 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 I remember. So clearly, yeah, yeah, there's something yeah. going on at the club yeah. where you just can't tell the truth. So what am I? What were we supposed to do? So they basically sugarcoat? want a yes man as a captain. And there you go. Maguire, Maguire, Maguire kind of comes across that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, yeah, this is what I was gonna say. He doesn't. He kind of reflect. Someone said it in the comments, and I was thinking the same thing. Big up whoever said this. In fact, it might be a few of you. He kind of reflects Oli. Like he will say the right things, and dare I say it? No disrespect. He's that kind of puppet guy, Maguire. He kind of is, and. As you said, mm. for him to come into May night and kind of leapfrog everyone so quickly. Remember, didn't he get the captaincy inside like how many months was it, Aaron? Like when he arrived? So we're talking um, like six months. Within six months, yeah. Six months. Six he was months a arriving yeah. from another club. Do you know how even rare that is? And it's another thing as well. It would have been interesting to see whether he would have got mm -hmm. this, whether like again, the English tax as well. Like, let's say he was Spanish. Would he, would he have really got that captaincy? That's another thing you have to ask yourself as well. Because even though Paul Pogba does have his critics, yeah, I will say this, though. Pogba's body of work far outsees Maguire. And whether people want to say, oh, yeah, but Pogba can be a bit funny here, whatever. But Pogba's still a winner, though. And sometimes he may not be the best media-trained person. But here's the joke, though. More times than not, if you... And from what we've seen, by the way, when you look at Pogba, especially international, when he was at Juve and parts of his Man United career, when Jose Mourinho had to trust in him before it kind of they, they fell out, Pogba was actually one of the star people leading Man United. He just was. And even when Ibra was there, like you could see like the respect. And we're talking about Ibrahimovic, looking at Pogba. I remember they done an interview and the way Ibra was talking to it. It was the one with the Thierry Henry one. I think I know the one. Yeah. Talking, and it was yeah. like. Yeah, and you can tell that even though Ibra was trying to like mock him, it was more like I'm mocking you because I respect you and I know you can take it. I see you as quality. And I remember he said he said to him, as long as Paul gets me the assist, I can get the goals. Like, that's mm. coming from Ibrahimovic, bro. Big, mm. that's a big, that's a big personality. So facts. That's facts, man. Yeah, that's um you, you wouldn't see that yeah. happen in other clubs. Um, I don't think you'll see, and I always I always take the, the example of like a Bayern or a Barcelona or a Real Madrid. Yeah. Bro, you're not 
getting into bro Lewandowski's been there for how long uh nearly like eight seven, years now seven eight years seven eight yeah. years and he still ain't time. taking the captain's um <laughs> taking the captain's armband you know you see what i'm saying mm. and yeah. bro you're good you're gonna come in five six months and this is like this is where people don't understand bro being captain of man united is a big thing bro we've had the likes of roy Keane. we've had the, so many iconic captains and you're gonna give mm. it to harry Maguire. come on man like the guy can't even stand up for his own teammates. When the whole thing happened with Ronaldo and, and, and Curtis Jones, where was he? Where was he? Because I, I saw mm. Ronaldo. I, I mean, to Bruno, be fair, he, as a defender, Fred. I guess he was right at the other end of the pitch, to be fair. but No, yeah, because even last mean. year, when the thing happened with uh, Lamella against Spurs, where was he? Complaining complaining mm. at the ref. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he came out on the interview and actually said, guy. I'm only here because I have to be, which he can't say that in public, exactly. man. There you go. He's not captain yeah. material, bro. He's not yeah. Captain. For real. When you say and even, and even his comments as well, his comments, who would they inspire? I don't even think he inspired himself. So I just don't know where, where they go with that. Maybe if Marcus Rashford stays fit, he can be their next captain as the homegrown talent and everything like that, leader on and off the pitch kind of I, thing. I was maybe. thinking that, you know. I was thinking no, that. No, no, no. Rashford, Rashford can be captain when he stops them fake ass apologies online, from. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but because, because he's such a role model off the pitch and he leads by example by playing well, well 85% of the time when he's on the pitch, that's what I was going to say to you lot. Would Rashford yeah. not still make a better captain than Maguire, though? I think Probably he would eventually. Probably. I think he's still too young, to be honest yeah, with you. Maybe, but I think no, he will eventually. He's got the... The character, though, mm. as they would say, the character. Yeah, and, and and also just just before we leave the Man United thing, uh, the DNA. going back to Ronaldo uh, yeah. a second, the the type of crosses that Luke Shaw was putting in when he was the best left back in the world for a month, he would thrive off of those now. But now there's no fullbacks going forward now. Well, yeah, that you know, the other day was not reliable. Yeah. You know, but on a consistent basis, Luke Shaw mm. he was he crossed them in. He was much better last season for like three months. But he's not even getting that from those areas. So again, service isn't there. That's that's all I want to say on that. And and, and you're right, KG, because <clears throat> and again, Luke Shaw not being able to do that, and the manager not being able to drop him because of that, it just comes down to fav favoritism again. Because when Ronaldo was signed, when we signed him, I wasn't, I was gassed, but not to a hundred percent. But then again, I was like, you know what? We got some great crosses at the club. Alex Tellers, Diogo Dallo. You know what? Them and are going to provide the crosses for him because Diogo does it for, for Portugal on a regular basis for Ronaldo. It's not going to be a problem. Tellez does it for, um, well, when he plays for Brazil, but he's got a great left foot on him, a great cross on him, great shot. He'll be able to put in those crosses. Where have these two been? They haven't played. Tellez put in a great performance against Vill Villarreal. He gets rewarded with what? Being benched the next game. So, favouritism, man. Favoritism is killing Oli. And I, I hate to say it. As much yeah. as I criticize oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. it's killing him. Just before we leave the Liverpool Man United thing, because I, I had a thought before this game was going on, by the way, but just the trajectory of Trent as well. You know, when they're doing all these top 10 right backs in the Premier League history and everything, man, there's a case that this guy's going to be number one when it's all said and done if he carries on this way and stays at Liverpool. Like, he's, he's, everything's improving with him, not just going forward, but defensively too. So big up Trent, man. Yeah, no, big up, man. I, I I think what it is with Trent that I think we hate as Liverpool fans that you lot might notice yourselves is because in the English world, as you said uh, at the beginning, uh, KG, like the hard work and the running around is like a very English traditional thing. So because he's a very silky flair-based player, I feel mm -hmm. like they kind of play it down a bit. And a lot yeah, of foreign they, players, of uh, foreign like pundits have said, right, if he was like Brazilian or if he was Spanish, like, oh, we'd love him in our country. Like, it's weird that you English guys are like, oh, well, let's play Reese James because he doesn't really defend that well. And it's like, hold on, why are you not concentrating on what he's good at? Why do you keep trying to like look at the, you know what I mean? It's, it is weird. Yeah. The whole Trent thing yeah. in the England squad is so weird. So weird. Man. For real. You know what I mean? But, Cal, welcome, brother. Welcome, yeah, welcome. Apologies, so I couldn't be in earlier. Uh, no, 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 that's well. good, man. That's You're good, right, Aaron, that's bro. Good. <laughs> all good, man. All good. I, I said all today, today I'm, I'm taking it all, man. I'm taking my L's. I'm taking the corn, everything. Yeah, that's what Ali said at Sunday afternoon as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, I won't, I won't go back over it because I don't want to... 
No, Perfect that's cool. That's cool. Ground, Matt, so is there, I mean, obviously, we got this one up. John Moore, big up yourself. Uh, hey, Dra- uh, hey, Drifty, Matt, uh, you wouldn't happen to know what time it is, would you? Uh, much love, guys. You'll never walk alone. Ollie at the wheel. Uh, Sorry, we got I did have Matt? one thing. So one one quick thing, because um, a few weeks ago, certain someone on the panel, who we love and respect, obviously, we love and respect to everyone here, um, said a certain centre midfielder had nothing, was, um, was dead <laughs> food and all that. Why well, he popped up with a mad assist? Um, <laughs> wow. that's, all, that's all. That's all. That's I, I was, was going to leave it, Cal. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think Cal was bringing because if I remember <laughs> no. correctly, the person because I saw a certain man play about... a pot. Was it the outside of the foot in it, bro? Yeah, Ooh. and something and he, about the and he person curled it around the, the centre back. Uh, was it <laughs> yeah, Mark, <laughs> that's the one, testimonial, that's the one. something like that? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Noble Henderson. I think he called him. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Okay, so I mean, if you oh. really want to do this, fellas, oh, I mean, say sorry. Name. <laughs> I didn't say that. If you, re- <laughs> you really want to do this, <laughs> go on, my brother. <laughs> go on, my brother. Go on, go on, go on. Listen, listen, the assist was good, it, it was very good. But like I said great, to you a couple great. weeks ago, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a great assist, yeah. But like I said to you a couple of weeks ago, when another Liverpool fan came in my DMs on Insta after he scored a goal in the Champions League, yeah? And I was going to reply back and said, well, I was going to say fair play, yeah? But then the commentator then goes, that's his first goal for two years. I'm like, okay, fair enough. There we go. That's exactly what I'm saying. Let's see when the next one of these passes come and then we can come back to this conversation. But until then, it's going to be silence. Jesus. But I, but I take nothing wow. else. I take I'm going to get you some fries with that salt, yeah, KG. No, 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 no. no. I, take, I take nothing away from me. It's this. But the fact that you guys are having to point it out so strong tells me exactly what I need to know. Only because it obviously doesn't reason. happen very often. <laughs> no, no but you got to be you got to be on, you got to be on it, KG. It wasn't just the pass. He actually bossed the whole midfield for that game. It wasn't just the pass. <sighs> I'm not going to give him too much credit for that, though, Drift. Come on, man. Yeah. No, no, but I think he, I think he dictated the game. I'm not saying he was sensational, but he dictated the game. The flow of the game still went through Henderson in the match. I at think Old he was Trafford. more Kaya, you know. Nah, I think in the attacking sense. Yeah, I was going to say K- Kaya. Yeah. 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 Even though yeah. 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 You 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 you're fabricating evidence here, Drifty. So don't do that. No, no, no. Right. I think I think Henderson was the one who was receiving the ball from the from the keeper the back four, and I then dictating the, the, the way the game went. From an attacking point, Kate was sensational in midfield. But I, you yeah. know, Hendo was Hendo was still the one who was receiving the ball from the um from the goalkeeper, turning and dictating how we played. That's what I'm saying. It, it wasn't just the goal. I don't just want to be like, oh, that's all Henderson did in the whole game was have the assist. That's all I'm saying. Um, we got right. any super chats before we move on uh, um, back to get through, bro? No, I think that's it for now, bro. Oh, actually, no, sir. There's just this one that, oh, okay, that I've okay. still got to say, sir. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, who had the biggest drop off this year from last year in the Premier League? Seems like Harry Kane has disappeared. Yeah, uh, um, that, that, was, that one's aimed at you, really, George. Oh, you're the best equipped to to answer that one, George. How, how do you feel about that? Oh, when it, there's there's it's true, man. Like, what? What did he get last year? Some forty assists, goals, and assists, and now he's got goal scorer, like, isn't it? What two? One, one goal, one goal, in it? One one goal, goal and yeah, maybe one assist mad. for Son. Like that's well, it. I, I credit to him. He has got about six goals. It's just only ones in the Premier League. Because oh, I think yeah. it is a bit, I mean, it is yeah. a bit misleading to say he's only got one goal. He's got six goals. I but mean, he I, got a hat trick against a very, very poor like Slovenian team. So. <laughs> I don't know if that can even count, but yeah, I don't know, man. And I think there's a lot of issues about it, man. There's a lot of issues. Management, team, Kane, the city move. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of things. It's Well, you, you know what? While we're on Harry Kane and we're talking to George, let's move Come on, on to obviously the midweek fixtures. Obviously, uh, the, the Carabao Cup, you're through. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And obviously, this is a competition that's important to you because, as you said, a trophy is something you still want to see your team win. So, do you know what I mean? How do you feel about going through last night, being in the quarters? I think the more important thing is City's out. <laughs> it's giving it a chance. <laughs> it's giving it a chance to else. That's for real, man. 100. Um, no, like, obviously, it was good to go through into the quarterfinals again. But honestly, my word, I managed to uh, watch the game through certain 
means um uh since it's not normally on tv but uh <laughs> big up those means man. though <laughs> <laughs> they always help <laughs> we hear a knock on your door georgie no way in, no, yeah. <laughs> delete, delete the board delete the board no i, I can't lie it was, just, it was a snooze fest again again we got we got saved from one very good moment where um, emerson crossing into lucas who heads it down to the ground at the six yard box and manages to bounce upwards into the roof of the net um apart from that like, i mean i'm not being uh, burnley are just very 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 poor like they, they, they were terrible to watch and didn't do well at all <clears throat> we we weren't good as well man and bearing in mind it was about uh i'd say a 65 percent 70 percent first team we played as well you still had kane star we still had romero um emerson was playing hoibjerg skip started like it was a pretty strong team and mm. yet Again, like I said the last few weeks in a row, we're, I'm, not, I'm not seeing shots. I'm not seeing attack. We didn't have a shot in the first half again. That was like across 90 minutes now. We haven't had a shot on goal. Um, and the same issues were happening where in the first half, obviously it paid out in the end, but Emerson wasn't crossing the ball at all. He was getting in amazing areas, uh, pretty much playing right wing the whole game, would never, ever cross the ball. He would pass it backwards. And look what happens. The one time he does cross the ball, we get a goal from it. And I'm just not seeing the, I'm not seeing the tactics to go and score and win. We're just trying to run it into the six yard box pretty much, and I hope that a cane or when Sun came on can save us. And that's it, really. That's all. That's all I'm seeing. So I don't know, man. I feel like if we if we played a decent team, we would have struggled big time, and we probably would have, we probably would have got knocked out. Um, we were just very lucky that Burnley were much much worse. <laughs> On, on Burnley, just quickly, because I know a lot of us here champion that it's, it's time for them to move on. They've been doing their day tactics and madness for too long now. <laughs> do you guys think that the luck is going to run out for them? Because they do. They they look a lot. They look a lot less organised and a lot more atrocious than they have for the their whole Premier League. Step. Are they going to go this year? Is it is it time? You know. You know what? Maybe maybe you should ask Sean Dyche himself. <laughs> I mean. Well, well, well. Comes back to the old adage, doesn't it? Burnley play like this. Burnley play like that. Burnley play rough. But drifty man up, man up. What do you want us to do? Go out there and do, do play it. Are we playing it, drifty? Is that what you want? He said football. If you come from the north, you expect to fight. How dare you? I, I, you know what? I'm done with you, drifty. I'll wait until we play you again at Turf Moor. Because you had it easy out in the field. You see those midfielders of yours? Those brittle biscuits? I can't wait to dunk them. Yeah? I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> you people are mugging us off, Drifty. And you know what? If I catch some of you fans at the ground, uh, Coppish is going to turn red. I tell you that much. Coppish is going to turn red. Mug. <laughs> Boy, that one, that one, that one got a bit personal so there. So aggressive with the one. Wrong, but Fair dues, fair dues. Now I want you to go down as well, still. I'm <laughs> 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 All right, I mean, I'm going to start doing, I'm gonna have to start doing streams of a pot of honey next week. Every time yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get <laughs> some lots of honey. Yeah. I lose years of my local course. That's actually mad. It's actually uh, mad. Mr. Dare, I said it says Calvin Phillips is the last skinned Romero, no, come on, man. No. I mean, obviously, oh, I mean, I, I think that is, I think that is super shady. But also, obviously, leads into the to the the first game of the Cowboy Cup, which unfortunately, and again, this is no shade here. I really wanted Leeds to win. You know, what I mean, like, I'll I'll be honest. I go with, if Liverpool can't win a, a cup tournament, there's a few teams that I always want to win that. And I know this is going to sound weird, but Leeds, Tottenham, and Newcastle are three of the teams that I'll always be like. Do you know what? If Liverpool don't win it, I'm good if those teams go and win it because they deserve it. They've gone a long time without it and they don't mean anything to me hatred-wise. And you know what I mean? I like the fan base, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted Leeds to beat Arsenal, not just because it was Arsenal, but because I feel like Leeds, you know, winning a cup would be good for them. Um, how are you feeling, obviously, about going out? I know you're disappointed, obviously, but the game, how did you reflect on it? And obviously answering that comment about Phillips as well. Oh, there's, I'm not answering that comment. Just thank you for your donation, you know. <laughs> and all that. There's, no, there's nothing for me to say about that. Some people are higher, you know. I can't, I can't answer that 
Good luck to him. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> All right, KG for Prime Minister. I've said it here right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, in, in regards to the game, though, yeah, I mean, it was quite even the first half, but then we made some changes. Uh, he also made some very, very weird changes yet again for the second not not week in a row because that was Southampton. Sorry, yo, I missed a week, didn't I? But yeah, it, it was just um, when we went one nil down, he took off our best our best defender in Urente, who was really running the show for us at centre back for Liam Cooper, which was a bad idea. Liam Cooper then does a, a really bad back pass back to Melier, and you know Enketia gets his, the second goal, and killed the game, but. Yeah, dis disappointing to go out because I did say I won't go on a cup run. I've, it's been a long time for Leeds United and, yeah, very disappointed to go out in that way. But it's all about the league for us now. OK, so do you feel like the cup, even though you want to win one, it could have been a distraction and maybe it's better you just concentrate on, on the Premier League or...? No, no, I don't I don't believe in that stuff because if you get a good a good result in the cup, it can lead on to good form in the league. I don't I don't buy into all of that distraction stuff. I think that's just excuses for if you do badly in the league. So I think it would have been a good thing for us to go on into the next round and build a bit more confidence with some of the players that haven't really been playing as well. So but yeah, disappointing and obviously disappointing that we didn't get a night of AFTV meltdown. So I can only apologise <laughs> on behalf of my team. So. <laughs> no, fair news, man. I mean, obviously in the cup now, we've got uh, Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, Southampton, uh, West Ham. Sunderland. Sunderland. Is that, who, who else? Am I? I'm missing two more teams. Arsenal. But Arsenal, yeah. And who's, who's the last team I'm missing, guys? Um, oh, us. I'm an idiot. Us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, sorry, it's us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no, an idiot. Sorry. So, I mean, it's kind of looking like winning the League Cup's not even going to be an easy cup because five of those teams are the top six. I oh, know Leicester, sorry, it's Leicester that are still in it, isn't it? That was the other team. It's not Southampton, it's Leicester, sorry, isn't it? Yeah, Leicester. Yeah, 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 yeah Leicester, Leicester won on pens. Yeah, they yeah. On pens, innit? Yesterday, yeah, 4-2 on pens. So the only top six team not left in it are City and Man United. So there's four of the top six teams here. It's not even going to be an easy cup to win. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So this looks like it Brentford. could end up being... Ju That's another one. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Brentford. They beat Brentford's Stoke. still in it. Yeah, they beat Stoke 2-1 yesterday. So you, said Liverpool, quarter, you, you said, said Liverpool twice. No, yeah, it's definitely a quarter final. Oh, did I? So oh, basically, okay, enough, Chelsea are through, Arsenal are through, Sunderland mm. are through, Brentford are through, West Ham obviously are through beating Man City, mm. um, Leicester beating Brighton, and then obviously we beat Preston, and then Spurs beat Burnley. Okay. Yeah, it's a tough, tough last date, man. <laughs> tough last date. The way things are looking at the moment, I probably, I probably want Liverpool to get Sunderland, Sun which is yeah, the obvious. No, no, but, yeah. but I'm not going to lie. The way George is talking, it's like shh, Tottenham would probably be an easier game than the others. And I don't even mean that shady. Don't be fooled. <laughs> nah, I'll say Sunderland. No, no, obviously Sunderland. Did you, see, did you, did you see the Sunderland, Sunderland manager? The Sunderland manager in his post-match thing said, um, <laughs> uh, hopefully he can draw Arsenal or Spurs and then he can get one of the big teams afterwards. one throwing shade. And my mum's from Sunderland as well, so I felt, I felt really hurt by that one. <laughs> but they have, they've got massive ca they've got massive cash behind them as well, haven't they? Who Sunderland? Did they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they they got oh, taken yeah? over. Before. Yeah, because that was the, I think that was the whole joke because obviously they got taken over. And then obviously Newcastle got taken over, so they're still like no matter what they do, they're always in the in the shadow. But I'm, I'm almost yeah. certain they got taken over quite early this season or last end of last season. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, saying that, I saw some news earlier on. Um, forgive me, I should have actually. Was it West Ham? There's a team West that Ham and check check takeover. Yeah, like twenty nine percent um stake in the in the club, right? Yeah, Apparently, check billionaire. Boy. Everyone's just coming in. We're, we're going to be fighting for eighth now. If this carries, <laughs> this carries on, so it really is Super League two point them. <laughs> Boy, they need to. Uh, they need to start maybe thinking about either just letting people go and literally do what they want when it comes to the money, or putting an actual like structured. Because that's the other thing I wanted to quickly touch on, guys, before we preview the next weekend. Newcastle. There was a Premier League meeting and they were left out of the meeting, so it was clearly about them. 
but it was pretended <laughs> like it was about trying to find a way to stop the Premier League from becoming, you know, whatever they their excuses of of, of teams not bringing in money. And apparently, there's been a uh, temporary pause put on a club being allowed to be sponsored by a company where any form of personal, you know, connection is to that thing. So obviously ownership straight out the window, but even if it's your friend, a cousin of a cousin, anything, if there's any connection with that company, that company can't sponsor your team. This is clearly so um, Newcastle so- can't go and get a sponsorship from a company that, you know, their like owners... Three billion. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah so Man City yeah, were basically Pierce. the Takeshi 6 9 of that meeting, basically. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so just quickly, because obviously I don't want to get too political, but... Probably call PSG for a little, like, phone a friend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is this not crazy, though, guys, that they're actually going to have, like, the King Power Stadium, that is straight away Leicester sponsored by, by something that's connected to their owner. Obviously, the Etihad situation... That's a clear connection. But then all of a sudden now they're going to make this rule that if you already have the sponsorship, you're okay, but you can't make a... Like, ain't this getting a bit stupid now? How Arsenal much they're like... Well. Don't forget Arsenal, bro. Em- Emirates. Yeah. Emirates, like, so it is a bit, it is a bit silly now, guys. Like the way they're trying to just try and find any way to stop Newcastle from... I mean, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, what's this? How, how are we feeling as all clubs here that could have them overtake us? It's just jealousy, really. Yeah, I feel like they, 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 they know they've got they're going to have millions hundreds of millions if not billions to spend over yeah. the next few years because haven't they already got like 200 million they're allowed to spend in January alone just yeah. because of what the so. lack of spending yeah. they had from mm. um, yeah, from Mike yeah. Ashley so they're already just trying to stop what other damage they could do in the future season so they, and they know that the position's threatened so that's why they're doing it but I think there has got to be some degree of of stopping it because it genuinely will just become like, well, if Newcastle could get taken over by one of the richest consortiums in the world, then why doesn't someone else go buy another Premier League team and another one by another Premier League team? And then it's just going to become 20 teams of the richest owners of the world going up against each other, seeing who can build a better superpower. Like that, It will just end up being like that if everyone's allowed to spend whatever they want. Mm. But well, yeah. I, I feel like it's a bit... I feel like it's a bit hypocritical from mm. other clubs in the Premier League, especially... Um, you know, Spurs, us, Liverpool, you guys, you know, why 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 are we complaining? Like we didn't just try and, you know, do the same thing with the Super League, you know, and, and got shut down and then came out with like bare apologies to the fans and, and now we're complaining about Newcastle having new owners. It's, yeah, the, the hypocrisy is a bit like, uh, yeah, well, spe- you, you, you better stay quiet, basically. Speaking on that. Aaron, which is kind of mad. I don't know if you lot also heard that there's a new kind of application for a Super League where they will be relegation this time mm. and Division 1, so to speak, of the Super League will be the Europa League, basically. Have you lot heard about this new proposal for this? No, new I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I didn't, I never I didn't know about that last part. What? So the, basically, how they're going to do it. So basically, because everybody was so upset about the whole, like, there'll be no relegation, there'll be no this, there'll be no that, and all that stuff. Apparently, what it will be now is the Europa League will be seen as the relegation so if you if you don't do well in the main league you'll drop down and then people in the Europa League get a chance to be promoted up into the uh the, so it'll be like there's this new proposal apparently going around obviously it's not official but this is what like whispers of, of a real thing so there'll be a relegation involved but it'll be like the Europa League will be like division one or the championship so to speak and then obviously the Super League will be like the Premier League this ain't going to go away, you know. Well, I, I, the the I, Super League is supposed to replace, like, the idea of it is supposed to replace the Champions League, is what they're trying yeah. to do. They're trying to, they're trying to reformat the Champions League, but make it their own brand so that UEFA can't have it, basically, mm. is, what, yeah. is what they're trying to do. So that, that kind of makes sense in a way that they would have, like, a second division for it. But it's just more games. More, you know, what I mean, it's just gonna get so stupid. Like, I don't, I don't know, know if man. it will be more games, just it'll probably be around the same. Because, what in the Champions League, if you want to go to the final, you've got to play no, on Cal, 20, 20 teams, apparently. Yeah, but you're playing, yeah, you're basically playing home and away 20, like 19 teams. Hold, yeah. yeah, hold on a sec. Yeah, it's, apparently, the, the, apparently, the idea is they're the idea alongside is, the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the idea yeah. is they, they want to change the current Champions League format because they don't think it's right. So what they're trying to introduce is like a European league that replaces the Champions League. So you play it like you you play it like you would play the Premier League, but you're playing teams across Europe. So you do your Premier League as well as the Super League, but both of them being actual table, a full table format sort of thing. Yeah. 
So, so I don't know where you fit in Carabao the FA Cup. I was just going to say know Carabao. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where you fit that in, Cal. But that's where, lot, you... that's where a lot of the discussions were that were saying that like any team that's in the Super League would Can't. probably field their like under 18s or something throughout the whole of the Carabao Cup and FA Cup because they just wouldn't have time for it and there won't be as much money in it. That's where the whole issue came from in the beginning. Yeah. This is mad. It's all a money orientated thing, isn't it? At the end of the day, as you said, George, you said it best. If they can monopolize this league that they're trying to create, and again, all the sponsorship, advertise, all that stuff just goes strictly to them, they'll make a truckload. The only yeah. problem is, though, they're going to be disrespecting everything else outside of the Super League. And that's yeah. where the problem will always arise because how can you tell the other teams that, you know, take other trophies seriously, like the FA Cup and Carabao Cup? Yeah, by the way, um, I don't know, Chelsea are just going to play their kids in that game because they can't yeah. be asked because they know that if they win their game in the Super League, it's going to earn them how much money? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So and it's the thing, like th their whole argument was like, oh, it'll give more chance of smaller teams to win than FA Cup on this than the other. But at the end of the day, what's the FA Cup going to be worth if no exactly. big if you team take out is taking it seriously? Yeah. Take I think to, today kind of summed it up. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but I saw uh, one of the Liverpool journalists put out a post, and it, to be honest, it's, he's been kind of getting flat for it, in my opinion, rightly so. But um, basically, saying that to win the Carabao Cup, you only get a hundred thousand. But to win the champion, to win Sorry. the group games in the Champions League, you get like two point five. Yeah, and he was like, "Well, if you want to make that sort of money, you've got to win the Carabao Cup every season for twenty five years." And I'll be honest, you see that sort of mindset, that makes me sick. Yeah, but that's that, that, I can't lie to you. That's that's our club's mindset. That's why. Yeah, like, that we, is our club's mindset. Our our primary concern is getting into the Champions League because it brings yeah. us way more money than it, it does. Winning something, which is obviously it pisses us all, all off fans off because yeah. Pochettino never took the FA Cup seriously or Carabao Cup seriously when he was at Spurs because his goal was always get Champions League, play Champions League every year. That's mm. where the money's going to be. Yeah. And then finally, Mourinho had a chance to win it last year and we sacked him six days before because we didn't want to yeah. pay him out. And it's like, no, no, we got to get back to Champions League. We don't care. We're like, he, he's sacrificing trophies purely for monetary gains. Do you know, do you know I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, hearing that. That really, really is disgusting behaviour. The trophy itself is supposed to be what the glory is. Mm. We didn't even know how much money you got for winning the trophy until about three, four years ago when all of this stuff... Like, when we were younger, growing up, nobody cared how much money you won. Like, I didn't even know you got paid for international duty until I was, like, in my 20s. I just thought it was such an honour to represent your country. Money wasn't even a thing. And yeah, then I started why, to hear all I that to talk about... I used about, to think the same thing. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, hold on. Why did you get paid to go and play for your country? It's an yeah. honour. It, what, like, and I just think this money thing's just getting out of control now, man. Do you it know really what's is. more hypocritical about it as well, Drew? As Liverpool fans and Man United fans, we sit here and we talk about how many trophies we've won. We take away League Cups and FA Cups and we are not successful as as we make out to be then, are we? So what, we just forgetting mm. about all those trophies we've won in the past? Mm. Does mm. my head in, man. Good Does point. my head in. No, it's real, man. It's real. And the thing is, like, loads of people said in the chat earlier as well, the Champions League's changing in 2024 anyway, and I thought that mm. format was also terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all awful. I don't know. Why is no one <laughs> making it's, it? Yeah, money, money is, money's too much of a motivation yeah. now, isn't it? It's too yeah, much it's of too, a motivation. They just want to play as many big games as possible, or what they see as big games, just so they can sell the rights to it. That's all it is for all yeah. of them. All right, let's move on to some positivity, man. Um, apparently, it's five past the hair at the moment as well. Still, that's the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the weekend's games. Let's get some predictions in. Let's bring the spirit back up because I'm not going to lie. The money thing is ruining football. It really is. And I hope <laughs> our game doesn't end up just being a joke. Um, can you bring up the, the, predict the weekend's games for me, Matt? Indeed, bro. Give we obviously know what the biggest game of the weekend is um, in terms of the, the two teams that are playing each other. So I'll leave that till the end. Um, I'll start with Leicester-Arsenal quickly because obviously that is a big game, guys. KJ, I'll start with you. How do you think that game's going to go, bro? Leicester-Arsenal. Ooh. Um, yeah, Leicester are rolling on some good form right now. They've got some good options up front. Uh, do, 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 early kickoff. I'm going to go with a Leicester 2-1 win. 2-1 win for Leicester. Okay, okay. To be fair, you're right. Both teams have got momentum, is it? This is quite an yeah. interesting game, actually, to be fair. Um, George, how you, how you feel about the leicester Arsenal game, bro? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. They're both, they're both definitely, I mean, winning recently. 
Mm. Is it Leicester that have got like a poor away form, or is it their home form? I can't remember what way around it. Yeah, to be honest with you, either way, I, I still see both teams scoring. Um, I'm going to say a two or draw. I think both okay. are quite even at the moment. Fair do. Aaron, Leicester, Arsenal, bro. Um, I'm going to go. This will be an interesting game, to be honest. Um, I'm actually looking forward to it. If I'm being think... honest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the... One sec. One second. Ah, oh, cool. Tell I'm coming back. Uh, Cal, what do you think of Leicester Arsenal, bro? Um, I think I'm gonna go. F- I think I can see a higher scoring game here. I think I'm gonna go four two Leicester. Raw. Oh, that would be amazing. Would be nice. Six, uh, <laughs> six goals, really? Yeah. Yeah, I can just. I can, yeah, I see a lot of goals in this game. Both of them aren't defensively very good, but both can score goals on their day as well. And us, look, uh, as much as I banter us, I probably banter Arsenal more than anyone on this channel. But they they are starting to play some decent football and and they have been putting putting some results together. So I do, yeah, but I just I don't think they'll have enough to beat Leicester though. Um, I think everyone's a bit indifferent in the comments. Yeah, Aaron, so bro, what what was you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was literally going to say the same thing. Um, I think it will be a tight game though. It might be like a three two or something. <laughs> I think it might be a three two. Oh, which way though, bro? Uh, Leicester or Arsenal? Which, which way are you go? The Foxes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they've, been, they've been ramping in uh, Cal's back garden a lot lately. Still, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real. Uh, Matt, just to finish off with that, uh, Leicester Arsenal. What do you think, bro? Um, I think Leicester got this. You know, I have to say, I think the momentum will be with them, especially being at home. I know Arsenal have kind of stepped it up, but. I, I don't know, man. Arsenal on the road could still be a bit shaky. And I think mm. this ain't just any old team. Leicester are a very good team. And they've got weapons, man. they got good weapons where they can score. they got Tillemans. they got Vardy. they got Patson, Dakar. Got Harvey Barnes. they got players, man. Um, Arsenal, I kind of feel like they have to be at their best to kind of win this game. Whereas I kind of feel like Leicester don't necessarily have, have to be to win it. So mm. I'm actually going to go Leicester. 3 1. 3 1. Okay, okay. Um, and you know, I mean, absolutely no disrespect when I say this. I'm basing this off of form, not just league table, uh, pos- league positions. Is Leicester Arsenal the biggest game of the weekend? Would you lot say? Nah. No, no, I still think Spurs United. Spurs United. No, Spurs United. Probably still. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, cool. No, fair enough, because because I'm more looking forward to the Leicester Arsenal game. So I just thought I'd ask you lot. Uh, what you thought but like because I'm actually really looking forward to that Leicester Arsenal game uh, but yeah we might as well just go there then straight out the bat then you know what I mean to the Jeez. panelists obviously the representatives so I Hold on, you, you didn't last. give your score bro oh yeah sorry yeah do you know I keep forgetting um, I actually think it'll be 2-2 I think this game will be a draw yeah I'm gonna go 2-2 now for the El Sakako there we go yeah, do you know, do you know the reason why I don't think this is El Sakiko is because I don't think Spurs are even considering getting rid of nah, Nuno. We're, we're no. not. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're just, they're, honestly, they're not thinking they're about not. getting rid of him. A lot of really fans not. want it to, and he was, it was actually trending yesterday, funnily enough, on Twitter, but it's, it's nah, not even close. Yeah, all right. So, obviously, I'll leave Aaron and, and, and George to last on this one because, obviously, they're going to pick the real meat on the bones. And then I'm just going to touch on the Oli thing slightly. I don't want it to be too big of a topic because it's been spoke about enough this week. But obviously, we, we, we will touch on it. So I'll come to you first, KG, on the, uh, on the big one. You know what I mean? The big one of the weekend. And, um, how, how do you feel this one's going to go, bro? I think this one's going to be... I think this is going to be one where Ali gets to win. I think it's going to be one of these that Man United are big and almost like subconsciously wishing that they lose. But Ali's mm-hmm. going to put it out of the bag on, on Sky Sports in front of everybody. And uh, I think this is going to be a 3 1 Man United. Okay. And do you feel like, touching on that whole, like he's going to kind of get bailed out, do you think the players are still going to have enough pride to play for themselves, even if they're not truly feeling Oli? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Ronaldo withstanding because this guy doesn't want to be on no losing team. That That's for sure. No matter who's in charge, he don't want to, he, do, he doesn't want to lose. You know, De Gea certainly doesn't want to lose it. And as as Aaron's pointed out before, he's spoken about him, spoken out about him many times, especially when he was in the man of the match era of De Gea. So I do, I just think that that we've seen it a a few times with Ali. When you think he's down, he's just gonna, he's it's like a rope a dope, and he'll just knock you out. 
So I think he'll be back and I think he'll get the three points in this one. No, fair play. I, I'm not going to lie. I think the majority of the people do feel the way you do still. Me personally, just to get my one out of the way so I don't forget, I actually think, and again, I, I don't mean this shady, George, like I genuinely <laughs> don't, but I just feel like Tottenham are so incapable of scoring goals at the moment Yeah, hmm. that this is going to be the game where they do. And you know, you sit back after you go, how did that happen? Like, there's always that weird thing that happens in football. Kind of like how Leicester beat United. Do you remember going into that game? Leicester had no form. They had no nothing, really. And then all of a sudden, they just put four past Man U. And you're like, I feel like Tottenham might do that. Like, the way Man United are defending, I feel like if you're a team that's struggling for goals, Man U are kind of the team that let you score goals. And I think the fact that it's at home, I'm going to go 2-1 Spurs in this game, you know? I, I actually think that, that this will be one of them games where we'll look back and go, yeah, May Knight's defending this so poor. Even gave a team he's not really good at scoring goals a chance to score some goals. So I'm going to go one for Son, one for Kane. I actually think it's going to be 2 1 Spurs. Uh, Matt, what do you think of this one, bro? This is a hard one to call because obviously Pope was suspended, but then again, he hasn't been playing, well, starting, should I say. So mm. you kind of can roughly imagine the May United kind of line up with the McTominay Fred kind of double sixes and then Bruno <laughs> just in front. So it's going to be same old. With Spurs, it, just, it all depends on which Spurs turn up. If it's a Spurs, as you say, that can score goals on their day, I think they'll beat Man United, but I kind of have to lean towards KG in terms of Oli does tend to just get this win out of nowhere. Not only that, Man United is away form up mm. until, I mean, I can't remember if he's still good now, but their away form at one point was really, really good. I don't know whether momentum... Leicester, and... bro, Leicester's the it's first Leicester away game they've lost so Leicester, for yeah, over so Leicester, a year and a half. Yeah, like but that. the thing is, Leicester kind of <clears throat> buried them and then we really, like, done, done, done something on them. So it's a thing where that's back-to-back -back losses away mm. from... Obviously, no, sorry, they, they lost at Old Trafford. Mm. Yeah, their confidence ain't going to be high. Do you know what? I'm going to say Spurs. Spurs 2-1. Their confidence, actually. Do you know what? I was going to towards Man United. Yeah, I'm Bob. You That's actually you convinced yourself. Do you know what I mean? I'm telling you, you've got to listen to the little man inside there. You, you convinced yourself there, bro. I convinced myself, fam. So you're going no, United. I'm... You say United. No, no I'm no, going you Spurs. Got, so you're, you're, you're coming on my side. You actually think Spurs are going to pull I it think off? Spurs, yeah. I think Spurs are going to do something, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so what, what's your actual score, bro? What's your score for that one? Uh, two one, two one, two. Ah, oh, same as me, Cal. Two one. Wait, 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 how are you feeling about this one? Yeah, Ollie's gonna pull it out the bag again, man. He's, I don't know. He's he's cooking something behind the scenes, man. For for him to still be in a job after that beating, he's got nudes on someone high up at the club, but mm. bad nudes, not just basic nudes. He got bad nudes in it. I see it in that side kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I see him pulling something out of the bag, and again, I think Tottenham will probably have the lion's share of possession. I think they'll probably play better over the course of the game, but again, it's goals, and mm. I think United will get the goals. I'm going two one United. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to come to Aaron on this one first. Uh, just a quick question before you actually give your score prediction. I know you guys have been a bit upset with Volley for a little while. But based on the fact, and I'm going to use a, a statistical analysis on him for this one, rather than thinking about the whole, like, you know, uh, performances and all that. He did finish second. He did reach a final. I know he lost it, but he did reach a final. And you lot are not too far off of the top, even though you have had two losses in a row. And until those two losses in a row, everybody thought Man United were in a title race. Like, let's be honest. We can't just look at the Leicester and the Man United game and then get too carried away. We all felt Man United were in a title race up to that point. Is what Liverpool did to Oli truly worth being sacked? Or are people getting a bit too emotional based on the rivalry? Because obviously Liverpool's the team you're never meant to let pump you because of the whole Liverpool Man U thing. Let's just say you lost that game to Chelsea or a team you don't truly have a real like enemy of but they're, they are a good enough team that could have scored the five goals are people, when people go it's a sackable offence alone they just lost to Liverpool is that too far when people are saying that no it's not because like you said it's, it's a game of a huge magnitude um, it's your fiercest rivals or it's meant to be because really and truly you call, you, you call someone rivals when you're competing for the same things we, we're not even competing 
for half of the things you lot are competing for. So, but yeah, that's a conversation for another day. Um, but yeah, I think that alone is a sackable offence. Um, oh, so you do way... agree? You do agree? Yeah, 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 that I literally agree. just that five alone, that five nil alone is like, yeah, boom. You can lose, you can lose at home to your fiercest rivals, but there's a way to lose a game, and the way we lost on Sunday was just unacceptable. I can't. I'm. I'm actually glad that I was at the Don Robbie watch along and I wasn't at Old Trafford because I would have lost my damn mind if I was at Old Trafford on Sunday. I don't know what I would have done. Because <sighs> people ask me, w- would you have walked out if he was at OT? I don't know because I've never been in that situation where I go to the stadium and I see and I see my team get pumped five nil mm. at home. So I don't know what I would have done, but. I agree, man. That alone is a sackable offence. You just can't oh, okay. know. I'm sorry. So you are in agreement with it. No, yeah. fair enough. I just thought, because I just, because from an outside point of view, I thought, is that an emotional response? Because oh, obviously... Really, really quick, Drew. You see when yeah. we lost 6-1 to Stoke, do you think Brendan should have been sacked after that? No. No, I don't. Raw. No, because Stoke, you, you really got no rivalry with Stoke. Stoke, they're, mm. they're nobody to use. I, and I also I'm felt like being the last game... I'm not going to lie. No, no, do you know what? I, it hurt and it was embarrassing. But I can also, I, game. No, no, no. It was embarrassing. No, but at that time, I, we, they, didn't, we didn't know. They made Nzonzi look like Rude Hullet, guys. They made Nzonzi look like Rude Hullet. Prime, uh, <laughs> You know what? I, I, I wouldn't have sat Brendan after Fair that enough. game. No, I, would. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, moving on to the, to the game then, Aaron. How do you feel this one's going to go then, bro? Listen, um, I've already said many times, um, I don't think there's anything Oli can do or will do to turn this around. I don't think he'll turn this around. If anything, I think he'll stay He will stay with his stubborn methods and stubborn ways. Um, in fact, I'm going to give you the Man United lineup against Spurs on Saturday. It's going to be De Gea. <laughs> it's going to be, going to be De Gea and exclusive. goal. Exclusive. It's going to be De Gea and goal. It's going to be wan Lindelof, Maguire and Shaw. McFred, Bruno, Rashford, Greenwood, and Ronaldo up front. This guy does not learn from his mistakes whatsoever. Can you imagine? Yeah. And I'm I'm trying I'm trying to say this. I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible because sometimes, you know, I say things and I'm very like I'm angry and I start swearing. I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible for the viewers as well. Yeah. And obviously I, I respect your channel, so I'm, I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible. You see when we played against Atalanta, yeah, that first, those first 30 minutes, mm. terrible. I was there, I was at the stadium, terrible. Obviously, we come back, we win the game. The way Oli was speaking in the press conference, he made it seem like in that first half, because he was saying things like, uh, we lacked the cutting edge. Um, we, what did he say again? We, um, we had many chances, but we couldn't finish them. Made it seem like we were unlucky. No, Oli, we weren't unlucky. We got outplayed. So, all right, cool. Fair enough, you win the game. But surely you look back at your mistakes and you think, okay, what can I improve? What can I change for the next game? This Don goes and fills the same team that put in that horrible performance in the first half against Atalanta and plays and puts out the same team against you guys. And you're just sat there like, do you learn anything, Oli? Like, do you actually learn anything? This guy thinks like a fan. I'm sure, yeah, he, he, he puts out the... Um, Starting 11, then he thinks, Yeah, Rashford, Greenwood, Bruno, Ronaldo, goals. That's what he's thinking <laughs> in his head. That's what he thinks. But then you're like, All right, cool. So you want you want goals, yeah? Fair enough. But how do the goals come about? Who's providing for who? Because Greenwood, you can't blame him for that. Greenwood prefers to cut it and shoot. Rashford prefers to cut it and shoot. In fact, Rashford actually did do it in the first half against you guys, yeah. yeah. When he had Bruno and Shaw on the left hand side, what did Rashford do? Cut in and shoot. Ronaldo's the type of, so we've got four shooters up front who don't provide for each other, and you think you're going to win, you're win, you're winning the game against Liverpool. And on top of that, you, you put out that stupid press, um, where, where we're just pressing by himself, and that's how we conceded the first goal. And it's bro, it's a shamble. So, all of that just to say, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know why Cage is laughing. All of that just to say, yeah, I don't think Oli's going to learn anything from what happened against Liverpool. He's just going to tell the lads, yeah, to just put in an extra shift, put in a bit more passion, desire and, 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 and legs in it. And he's just going to field the same team. And yeah, we're probably going to lose. I'm going to say two months first. Okay, you, you got... Here's the mad thing, Aaron, yeah? 
and obviously, like I know George is pay, pay, uh, patiently waiting to, <laughs> to give to give <laughs> to give his output on this game. I'm I'm actually very intrigued. That's why I left George to last because I'm very intrigued on how George feels this game's gonna go. But Aaron, let me just ask you something real quick. I actually hear those players you just named, and I can't lie to you, bro. I think goals. I highly rate Rashford. With me, 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 Matt and Cow have gone back and forth on this quite a bit, but I was very skeptical about Rashford for the first year or two. I rate him. I take him at Liverpool. I've got to be honest. I think Greenwood is an absolute sniper. Like I think if you're talking about scoring goals, put him in the 18 yard box and it's a goal. I remember this is a Liverpool fan talking about a man new player, so you know I mean what I'm saying. Greenwood is a sniper. He's an England future great, in my opinion, if he's nurtured properly. Like, he just hits the target. Doesn't matter where he is, he hits the target. Ronaldo, we already know. That's obvious. He's got the CV to just back out. Bruno's the best midfield, best goal scorer midfielder, probably in the league. I mean, I know you could put like a, a De Bruyne or a couple of others, but if we're going based on what he's done since he come, he's been the best goal scorer midfielder in the league since he got here. So I, I do actually hear those four, and I can't lie, I think goals. Like, I do. So, is it more the structure rather than the actual players who are playing? Why the goals aren't happening? Or is it just you're trying to put too many pieces of a puzzle together that don't complement each other? He has a system, yeah. That he, a certain system that he plays, a 4 2 3 1. And he just tries to fit in as many goal scorers as he possibly can. That's what I think he's trying to do. He's, he tries to fit in as many, as many goal scorers as possible. That's why um, he keeps playing McTominay because he thinks, oh, McTominay got two against Leeds last season. I think he can nick maybe one here, one there. Oh, Fred got one against X team. Oh, I think he can nick one here and there. Like He purely thinks goals. And even that's not working. So, yeah, it's just, it's just the whole shambles, man. The, the whole tactical approach is just a mess. And um, I heard things like, yeah, man, I, the people are cooking me in the comments, man, for my mic. Yo, I, <laughs> I'm going to fix it by next week. I'm going to fix it by next yeah. week. No, no, you know, um, it, it, it has gone off a bit, but because you was talking proper <sighs> thingy, I, I, I didn't want it into, uh, you know. Oh, right. It, okay. but it's cool, it's cool. Go, go, go. Bro. We can, um, we can hear you. It just keeps going up and down in the volume. <laughs> I want to say it's not the mic, it's the pain, bro. I heard there are disagreements between you know the coaches themselves in, in the coaching staff between Oli and Phelan and McKenna and Carrick McKenna and Carrick are working on a few specific things in training but then mm. Oli and Phelan are like nah we just go 4 2 3 1 and then you know the same team same old bullshit every single game so, or four two four, bro. Apparently, which is a formation yeah. only for Pez. We gotta be real. Four two four <laughs> is a Pez formation. It is. No, yeah. no it Brazil is. did it back in the day. Still, Boy, and, if yeah, Oli's trying just... to, if Oli's trying to play like Brazil and the only Brazilian <laughs> that's on the pitch is Fred. That's our madness, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's Fred, that's, that's our madness. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing you all saw um, the video that's been going around on Twitter where. You know, he's been asked about his playing style, what he thinks, what is his philosophy. And he's just there waffling, man, talking about <laughs> we don't need to get, we don't need to go into intricacies. And, you know, playing for Man United is about making right decisions and passion, desire, getting at the end of crosses, who wants uh, tackling. And I'm like, Ollie, you sound, you sound like. Is he more English I... than an Englishman? I swear down. Well, he's definitely got that English mentality ingrained in his brain because man thinks we're still in the eighties or something. Because bro, it's <laughs> it's embarrassing when I hear stuff like this. It's just it's just it's embarrassing, man. Because you sound compared to the other managers in the league, you sound I'm sorry to say, but you sound dumb. You really sound dumb and uneducated when you in 2021 you're still talking about passion and desire can win you games. And like remember when we lost four 0 to Everton? Yeah? <laughs> when <laughs> Oh, and when I hear it out loud, it's even more funny. <laughs> it's the truth, bro. It's the truth. Listen, it only needs a bowl of muesli to put everything right. <laughs> when did we lose to? Um, when did we lose to? What was it? I think we lost to Everton four nil three years ago when Oli first came in. Yeah. We lost four nil to Everton away. This guy was sat in a press conference talking about. Back in the days, and this is what annoys me as well of Man United. It's always referring back to the Fergie days, which I listen. Fergie done his thing. I respect. Remember, remember when we got called the historians? Life's funny, isn't it? 
That's funny, isn't it? But yeah, go on. Back in the days, uh, when it was it was gigs there, it was Neville, it was Bex. Uh, we always we always ran a lot. It was about who ran the most. Um, it's, it's the same right now. You've got to run for your teammates and you've got to put in tackles and I'm going to be successful here. And there's a lot of players that are not going to be part of this successful uh, project. Well, guess what, Ali? All the players that left have won trophies. Have you? No. <laughs> Literally, all the players that brought, even Ashley Young left the club and won trophies. <laughs> Ashley Young got paid when he left, bro. Ashley Young got a, <laughs> he got a fade. Ashley Young got a fade, Yeah, he, he started to feel himself. <laughs> heck, and I'm not even going to lie. Fade in Italy might be harder to find than you think, you know. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just the whole, the whole oh, old man. school approach that's just really damaging mm. our squad because we've got so many talented players, man. Like, honestly, we actually have a lot of talented players and that some of them are just going to waste. Like, Van der Beek still can't get a game and you probably won't get a game against Spurs. Yeah. You probably, probably won't get minutes. That's I'm sure right. there's, a, there's... I think all, never of gonna here, play, you know? all of you here would love to have a Van der Beek in your team. I love like, him. I wanted him in the first place. Do you see what I mean? Because everyone knows his qualities, but apparently it's not good enough for Oli. He wants legs in midfield. He wants McTominay and Fred because they give him energy, apparently. So... Oli definitely woke up and 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 chose violence the day he wanted to sign Van der Beek. He, I think he, I think he did it. Ip dip dog shit around Europe. Pick the player. For I, him I, I, his I don't even think it was his decision to be honest with you. No, it wasn't. Like, it's it's anyway, got it's to have been the board tell. saying yeah, we want to sign a young, him. promising, exciting player from Europe. Let's get him, and then he's just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> so, like, it's all it feels like. Van I honestly Bench, think you know, I honestly think Donny's gone in January. <laughs> he probably he probably will be Newcastle. I think I think Donny's gone in January. <laughs> Uh, it, Mr. 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 Tibbs is kind of basically kind of for what Cal was saying earlier, like as Oli got some kind of leverage on the board. I no, I I genuinely don't believe it's leverage on the board. You know, I I actually think it's just they know because there's a lot of things going around saying that Zidane and Conte they're actually scared to hire because they believe those managers wouldn't let them get away with what they get away with, and they want a manager who will actually let them do like Oli does, like. Kind of like what Wenger did for for Kroenke. like he'll he'll just pretend everything's okay and mask over the stupidness they're doing behind the scenes. Where someone like Conte is not going to scar his reputation, he's yeah. going to call you out. Mourinho did it. Mourinho didn't want you yep. lot to scar his reputation. Mourinho was like, "What is going on here? I'm not having it. You lot are acting stupid." Rare, rare, rare. Mm. And there are rumors that you lot apparently Ten mm. Hag is actually more likely to get the job than any others. And don't get me wrong, Ten, don't he's a good dead. manager. Don't you dare touch him. <laughs> but, but we got to be honest, he's probably a much more of a yes man type of manager than a Zidane or a Conte. Yeah. He probably will come in and kind of more let you get away with things than Zidane's not going to let you scar his reputation. Let's be real. I, I, I hear you, but I think the good thing, well, I don't know if Ten Hag is really a yes man, but the good thing about Ten Hag is he can thing. work with nothing. Yeah. yeah. He could yeah, yeah. literally, he. I, I don't want to say too many things because he's never managed in the Premier League, but he could do bits with just youth players purely because of the type of football he plays. He's mm. doing bits of Ajax and yeah. he doesn't, apart from Tadic, there's not really like experienced or big time players in there. You'll have or first maybe Sebastian Haller. Gra- Gravenberch, what a player. Yeah. <sighs> Bro, see, see what that's, I mean? what I was, that's what I was going to say. Like, I know obviously the Glazers are dead, dead dirt in it, but. Like, I think a lot of talk always goes back to the owner. Sometimes you just have to look at one of the biggest sources of problem. And you just said it. If Oli was to leave tomorrow and Ten, uh, Ten Hag was to come in, the level of the players he's already got would improve. In the same way we saw mm. well, we saw players at Liverpool improve when, when Klopp came in. Like, Rashford, Greenwood, even Sancho. And he's not even been there that long. You can just see how their games haven't developed because their coach isn't good enough to coach them to the next level. Like coaching is such an underrated thing. And again, it's not just down to Oli, but if Oli's the, the head of that, then the dominoes fall on him. And it's just been bad. Like you're seeing the same style of play from Rashford from when Oli came in to now. You're seeing Thank Greenwood you. doing oh the same God. thing. You're seeing Maguire doing the same thing. You're seeing Lindelof do the same thing. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say Klopp's magically turned every single player around in Liverpool. He hasn't. And he's had to buy players. But that team that Oli's got right now, 90% of that are his players. And the players that he hasn't bought in and the players that mm. were there already, like Pogba, are good enough to make you 
have a good run at trophies and, and a good run in the league. And he's not even got close to showing it. That's like, what that's what I love about Pochettino as well, to be honest, because he was just such a good coach first, Fact. like always just such Thank a good you. coach first. Yeah. Obviously, he inherited a terrible team and same thing. Like he ended up buying players, but he brought in the players that he knew he wanted to coach a certain way. Yeah. And then that's yeah. got us to, obviously to the point where we got to because of that. And like you said, it's the exact same thing that Klopp's done as well. I'm I'm so po- glad both Poch of you is the mentioned. one. Poch, sorry, uh, Poch is the one I'd be petrified if Man United got. I'm well, actually glad Poch, he's at PSG. Poch would be first target, surely, for Man U. I think Should they be. wanted him before. Po- Poch I thought like he was gone last November. Yeah, <laughs> Poch, Poch doesn't like the superstars. Um, obviously, he likes the glory of that job because it gives him reputation. But I know he'd rather be at Man United and work with players than have that pressure of, oh, you've got Messi, Neymar and thing. You mm. should just be able to win. Poch would rather have Man United have a four-year project and build them up. And I'll be actually much more scared of Man U with Poch got that job than, than any other manager, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm yes, so I, glad. Gonna say. Yeah, no, it's fine, bro. I, I'm so glad um, George and, and Cal mentioned this because, like Cal said, Rashford and Greenwood, especially Greenwood, and I I'm saying Rashford. especially Greenwood, is because I like him so much and he's got bags of potential. This guy's been doing the same things for three years now in the Premier League since he, since he um, came through the ranks. And I'm scared that Next season, defenders will just know how to defend against them. They already do. It's Mm. always when he gets the ball, it's step over, step over, shoot. Now, yes, you're two-footed. Yes, you can score with both feet. Yes, your finishing is incredible. But at some point, it's not. you can't just rely on that for your whole career. He's what, uh, 20 now, turning 21 soon? I think next year or something? Mm. You can't keep doing this until you're 23. At some point, there has to be a coach who's going to elevate your game to that next level where yeah. you've got that, you know, that raw talent, which is the finishing and, and, you know, him being able to score both feet. But you've also got that bit of extra, which makes it even more difficult for defenders to defend on you. Mm-hmm. And right now, even Rashford, Rashford's still running, the, Rashford's still running in a straight line with his head down, not knowing what he's doing. Who's telling him to improve? Who's telling him to keep his head up? Look at his options left and right. Nobody's telling him that. It's true. It's true. You know what I mean? I I can't lie. Um, I mean, obviously, we slewed early for a little while now, so George, before we just (laughs) move on to the the FPL, uh, get the Fantasy League up. uh, How how do you feel the game's going to go, bro? I I weirdly think we're going to win, which is normally because, well, so far we've got... We've got a pretty good home record this season so far. It's only Chelsea that we lost to. But even then, we still played our best football in that first half. It's just mm. that the second half against them totally like just capitulated. So I mm. think at home, now that the fans are back as well, um, I think we'll, we'll do well. And I think we've got a pretty decent record against the, the Manchester teams as well, especially at home. And it's one of them ones where I feel like we perform a lot better when there's not a lot of pressure on us. And I feel like there's far more pressure on Man United and Oli at the moment. Mm. for them to succeed than, than we are. Because like you say in earlier, Drifty, that as much as maybe some Spurs fans want him out, like, let's be real, like there is no pressure for Nuno getting sacked because he just won't be sacked. Even yeah. if we did lose to United, it's just not going to yeah. happen. So I feel like there's th- there's that level of like lack of pressure. I think if Son's playing well, that's going to be the key thing because he was huge in that um, 6-1 win last year. Mm. Um, and I think, to be honest, I do think Kane's going to get a goal, but I am a bit worried of Ronaldo. He scored against us in the past from Real Madrid and all that. So I'd probably agree with you guys and say a 2-1, 2-1 Spurs win. It's not going to be by a lot of goals at all because, like you said, we're not scoring many. Mm. But um, I'd say we'll just about get a 2-1 win, to be honest. Okay, so that was KG and Cal went for Man U. And then the rest of us went for Spurs, I think, right? Or 2-1, I think. Yeah, 2-1. So. <laughs> okay. That's the score, Lam. Fair enough. Um, I don't. Is there any point talking about the City game? I don't. They're like they're gonna win that game, right? Who are they playing? Uh, they are playing it's Crystal Palace. I think it is. Let me double check. Okay. I'm sure it was. I I, I can't. They, they, haven't, they haven't got Townsend to get them that absolute belt. I'm, I'm sure it was Palace. <laughs> Who they got? Yeah, they got Palace at home. They got Palace yeah, at home. Like, yeah, yeah they, 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 nobody yeah, believes think... Palace can cause an upset there, do they? Come on, the Jackie. Jack no. Although Ben Teke is on form, I, though. I was going to say, I think, I, think City will, I think City will win. I wouldn't be surprised if Palace did pull off an upset, though. Palace are playing well. Vieira is yeah. actually playing they, some ball. I think are. Arsenal hired the wrong legend, to be honest. They are, but I think oh, Arteta is not a legend. 
<laughs> is he not an Arsenal legend now? How, how can no. he be? He's an Everton legend. No, he's more of an Everton. You know legend. what? I think he's actually only Arsenal. I, legend I, 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 I can't help but be shady like... towards Arsenal. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't help it. It's, it's in my it's in my DNA. Uh, just quickly, who's Chelsea got the weekend? Um, uh, the... Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. 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 Uh, no, nobody sees Newcastle pulling off an upset there. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. 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 Chelsea, bro, they're, in the they're, they're so poor. They're so poor. <laughs> yeah. That, that uh, so turn ugly. Just quickly before we go on to, obviously, the, the Fantasy League then. KG, just quickly, what do you think the Liverpool-Brighton um, score will be at the weekend? Okay. Um, uh, 2-0 two two Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, 2-0 two two Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, George, Liverpool-Brighton. That's a that's a good scoreline. Mm. Who get who, who gets most of Brighton goals now? Anyway, if they do win, I don't think it's by much when they do. And More you guys are, is, is kind of. Yeah. I think you might be their top goals going at three or four goals. I think. Oh, you guys are just on too hot form though. Same with Salah. I probably even I probably even say three 0 to be honest. I know I know Brighton's defense is good, but I think you guys at home is just it's too much at the moment. So I would say three 0 Liverpool. Uh, dudes, Aaron, quickly on the Liverpool-Brighton game, what do you think the score will be, bro? Yeah, I'm going to say the same as well. 3-0 Liverpool. Um, I think you guys will deal with Brighton like easy. It's not going to be no, like, no bigger for you guys. Fair dues, fair dues. Obviously, guys, we will get our predictions for the game tomorrow when we do the preview around lunchtime, guys. So stay tuned to the socials for that one. Drift, don't forget about um, Leeds. They've got Norwich. Forget it, forget it. <laughs> 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 no, we can't leave you up, bro. Don't no, he's okay. No, it's all right, man. <laughs> what do you mean? The show's running a bit late bro. here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 honestly, bro. Honestly, I want, I wanted to see if KG Paul was deliberately forgetting about the game. Um, but like, I, 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 I was kind of hoping don't. that we just sneak past it. In <laughs> you, know, you, you know what it is, yeah. The, the thing is, yeah. Like last time yeah. when, when they were playing, yeah. KG thought I was being shady, but I wasn't when I was saying about how Southampton are capable of results. So I don't think it should be too much of a thing. And like, so now every time I say something, I feel like KG thinks I'm being shady, but genuinely I'm not. But on this occasion. It has to be about 3-0 to Leeds. Surely there's no way. Norwich are on course to get the worst points tally in the Premier League, guys. They must be, right? At the moment, the record is Derby with 11. Surely Norwich are going to beat that. Where are Norwich ever going to get a point from? I mean, all right, let's just chop it up, KG. Let's go into it, for real. All jokes aside, all jokes aside, let's chop it up. Norwich, Leeds. This has got to be the worst team in the Prem right now, isn't it? No, yeah. like, I, I don't think I've ever seen a team worse than them, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to go into it a bit more tomorrow because we won't have full team news until tomorrow because we play Sunday. But mm. yeah, for me, there's no excuses for us to not win this game. If we don't win this game, as someone asked way earlier in the chat, uh, is it time to panic? Yeah, it will be time to panic if we don't beat Norwich City. There's just there's just no excuse for it for me. Uh, with what Norwich are offering out, they're not offering anything good. It's basically they they're just coming up for for the money, go back down for the parachute payments, and that sounds so basic in thinking because I hear it all the time, but it's actually true. Like mm. you only had to take Daniel Farker's comments last week and just hear he, he didn't care. Did they got beat 7 0? Do you know what would happen if Leeds United lost 7 0 and the manager come out and said that? It would be ugly up here. Mm. It would be ugly in Leeds, man. They just wouldn't accept that. But those guys, they accept it down there because they don't care. So for me, there is just no excuses Sunday. Three points or nothing. And, and man, listen, if we don't win that game, I don't know. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> missing KG poster. We'll be Come like, on. where are you? Where are you? <laughs> we will see KG next week. Co you know? co coming in like Liam Neeson. Where is she? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No, no Liam Neeson here, uh, George, man. We already talked about that. <laughs> nah, but you, but you, you know what I'm saying, man. Norwich, they don't do yeah. anything to even try and, yeah. and give it a yeah. fair a fair crack of, of staying up. They really don't care. 
Can I? And, can and I everything that their manager said to me. And the the, the worst thing, sorry, is, is that the manager is actually looking at the games, like against Leeds and everything else, to possibly get points. So that gives us another motivation to just stuff them. And say, well, no, thank you. You're not. You're not anywhere near us either. But that's on us because let, let me let's get this straight. We haven't done it at all this season, not at all. That that uh, last minute equaliser against Wolves. The the last twenty minutes of that game was the the Leeds United that we all know. Apart from that, it was all Rafinha. Matt will Matt will tell you because he was voice me uh, messaging me during that game. And when Rafinha yeah. was on the pitch, it was all Rafinha. And it wasn't until yeah. he went up where the rest of the team decided, well, he's off. We're going to have to do something now. And everyone else decided to play. So, yeah. Yeah. listen, they better, they need to book up their ideas. And I've, I've said it on my own channel many times. Can't, I can't get excited by a 1-1 draw at home with Wolves. I just can't do it. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it has to be three points on Sunday. Yeah, so, so what, what was your score prediction for the one side, KG? What was your score prediction? Oh, um, I'm going to go with 2-0. Two nil leads, yeah. I hear not, that. I hear that. I'm not trying to make excuses for you guys because obviously you haven't been brilliant so far, KG. But obviously injuries. We Liverpool, we kind of saw what injuries can do to a team last year. Like we were losing to like Fulham at home and Brighton, Brighton. Burnley, and all these teams at home, like at home. Mm. So obviously we've got a deeper squad than you. So you, yes, even though you're right, you're a better team than Norwich. But injuries we've seen can deplete a team and make it really difficult. Do you think that is what the main issue has been for you guys this season? That you, if I'm not mistaken, you haven't fielded your best eleven all season yet, so far. No, that that's too easy because the the players that we've got coming in, we've got Bamford out, we've got a 27 million Rodrigo up front that isn't cutting it. Mm. We've got Tyler Roberts Yay. that keeps on getting picked. Uh, when when Rafinha's out. It's going to be Dan James or Somerville, who actually Somerville did very well. But for me, this Sunday, it's about putting Rodrigo behind and Gelhart up front. Uh, Liverpool people may very well know of Gelhart. Oh, we know, we know. It's we time, know. It, yeah, it's time to unleash the kid, especially against Norwich. There's no excuse yeah. on a Sunday I like for him. me to see Rodrigo and Tyler Roberts playing up front. Because when you're yeah. starting one of those two, we're starting with 10 men and it's that simple. Mm. I couldn't. I, that's why I had to message you, KJ, and be like, is, is Roberts the guy that you keep saying you don't like? Because I was watching the Arsenal game and I was seeing him in there and I was thinking, is this the guy that KJ keeps on saying they're down to 10 men if this guy plays? <laughs> yeah, listen, it, it's not that I don't like him. I'm, I'm sure he's a very nice guy, but I just, he's not a Premier League footballer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, mean, say I know, obviously, name, I know yeah. it's not personal. I mean, as in like, yeah, ability yeah. on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, it, it, there's just no excuse, and and injuries that that's that's a crutch that these guys can use. But I'm I'm not having it because when we when we was missing players against Newcastle, they had a couple of players missing, but their couple of players missing shouldn't equal the players that we had missing. So we should have still beat them. Does that make sense? So mm. our standard should have still been good enough to beat a, a team of that caliber, but it's not. It hasn't been happening so far this season. Fair uh, just yeah. quit. Matt will always stalk Rafinha. I think. Yeah, no, I wasn't even on a stalking team. KG can I, I, tell don't you. Don't lie, bro. No, man's cut, Listen. man's cut holes in the net curtains, bro. All I was saying to all I was saying to KG was this: I was like, bro, Rafinha is doing everything, and the amount of chances he creates here is crazy. And I was like, bro, if they just buried a couple of the chances, yeah, Leeds would be so much better off. But as as Kenny yep. said as well, when he went off was when they when they were like, oh, do you know what? Now we've actually got to do something because I feel like when he gets the ball, yeah, they watch him, they marvel. They at him. Yeah, yeah, Matt, yeah. Matt, let me let me say, yeah, that is yeah. exactly what happens. They watch him, they're waiting for him to do something out of nothing. He's passing the ball forward, no one's moving. He he had a, there was a perfect chance for him to to um, score a goal. Harrison, all he had to do was cut it back to him, and Harrison yeah. sliced it wide. Rafinha's going mad on the penalty going spot. Crazy, bro. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. going nuts because it's just not good enough, man. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't you know to take a genius work out. He's easily our best player, but they just cannot put it all on his shoulders every single game. Do you think for having real? Bamford back is going to be like a key key to start getting better games, or is it just still problems when he's in there? No, nah, because Bamford, what, what it is, is it, uh, what people talk about pressing. Our game is pressing, and he does press from the front, and we've missed that. 
and we've even missed him around the box where Rodrigo is just not that good. Mm. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just sick of talking about a few of these players in all fairness, but listen, let's get the job done against Norwich and then we'll, we'll assess it after that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> instead of going around getting everyone's score predictions, nobody believes Norwich can beat Leeds, though, right? No. There's no, okay. no way Norwich are beating Yeah, this. no, it's no it's way. Not. Absolutely Leeds. no there's, way. There's being controversial and then, then there's being stupid. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For yeah. real. No, Leeds, <laughs> Leeds have got, they are definitely going to my accumulator. That is a fact. Um, <laughs> oh, all right, so just... <laughs> 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 no, Leeds are going to my accumulator as a win, 100%. But they 100%. have to. If you That's got to be the biggest banker of the weekend. I think your triple captain back from injury. Still going what second half? <laughs> no, yeah, Norwich. Nah, not Norwich. No, no. Um, I think they're going to carve them open. Try, you're going to carve them so, open. Surely, surely. So just to cheer KG up before we come out as well, after having a hundred point week, which I'm not even going to lie, is yeah, very impressive. Yeah, just bring out a fantasy that. league for me before we take it out. KG yeah. is hot on George's heels. I'm not even going to lie. Mm, he's you climbing. Want me to get him, Matt? Uh, I've got it up on screen now. Hold on, hold on. Bear with me. Yeah, the fact of... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Bear with me. Peak there, Beautiful. Hold on, hold on, hold on. DJ, DJ! Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I did, I actually did, but then because you wanted to go back to the fixtures, I just remembered I came out of it, innit? So and, and enlarge zoom, that one zoom. Time. Yeah, yeah, one second. Yeah, zoom, <laughs> zoom in just yeah, a little bit more. Zoom We're gonna in make a tiny it a little bit more, bro. Screen. I actually got the lowest oh, little little because I didn't have Salah Captain. My Don't worry. I'm not even gonna lie, KG destroyed this week 101 points. I'm not even gonna lie. That is a good week. That is a good week. <laughs> That really is. I forgot to change my team this week, so I'm actually kind of impressed. I've got 79. <laughs> Listen and I see... to this guy. Listen and you know what, Jeff? You know what, Jeff? You know what I realized? Jeff, Jeff thinks he's slick as well. Do you know what Jeff did, people? Because he won't tell you. So Jeff yeah, had two, two teams. teams in. Yeah, he took, and he took out the team that was doing bad. Yeah. I put oh. in his other team. Ain't that hold right, on, Hold on. Hold, hold on. on. Explain oh. to the people. Hold, hold on. Hold on. No, I didn't. Here's what happened. OJ team. Uh, no, right, okay. No, here's right. what happened. Everybody else had their team from week one, and I was the only one with the new team. So I thought, what's the point Aaron in keep creating well. the new team? Aaron, Aaron, Aaron had a new team as well. No, when I went through it, it was just Aaron making these crazy nice subs a week thing while his points were going down. I thought yeah, it yeah, was the whole... It was this crazy... We're done like, doing that. We're done doing that. Yeah, Aaron, you got to stop doing that, bro. I'm never going to lie, but you got to stop doing that, bro. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm in competition with man, and I'm like, Aaron, bro, stop making nine subs a week, bro. Like, this nine is madness. I'm, I'm so I was... I look, soon, nine four points. Aaron had the second best week. You know what I mean? So I thought, you know what? Instead of me making a new league every week because I'm the one with the bad team, I just brought my other team in and got rid of the team. It it, it was easy going. It made made things easier. You lot were the ones going, we're not taking away first week points and all that (laughs) stuff. So I thought, well, I might as well just bring my other team in then. Do you know what I mean? That is what it is. Where are you? (laughs) (laughs) This just makes life easier, innit? And again... I'm yes, still nowhere drift, near KG. This is, and drift, George. this is Drifty's fair, FIFA fair play. This is what I'm, I'm still nowhere near <laughs> KG and George. I looked at the scores. Them two are still way out in front. It wasn't going to skank it. It wasn't any kind of cheating. Thank me, bro. I'm a play. Lo- I'm a position lower, bro. Like, I'm out but of you Champions had a week League advantage. Now, you had a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out of Champions League now. Bro. I'm actually hanging on now. I'm actually hanging on to my full spot, blood. Well, 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 I mean, I'm aiming for Super League status. <laughs> <laughs> but right, right now it's hotting up at the top. It really it is, is hotting up at the top. You know what I mean? And and right now as well, Aaron getting the second highest points is proven. Aaron can actually catch up and get out of that bottom spot without the the, the deficit of like 35 points minus at the beginning of the week, bro. <laughs> 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 but no, it's heating up. It's heating up. You know what I mean? Right now, it looks like at the moment, obviously, Aaron will have a Liverpool top on and George will be the one getting the prize. So, you know what I mean? We'll keep it pushing. We'll keep... <laughs> Oh. I see Aaron shaking his head back. He's like, no, that ain't going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's just going to you know, fake addresses, isn't it? If, if right now Aaron was to catch uh, Lewis, which is very achievable, and Lewis was in the bottom spot, what kit would we actually put I was put just Lewis thinking in? that. Keep Tottenham. 
<laughs> no, it's got to be Tottenham. Tottenham. It's, 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 Tottenham, Tottenham. it's Tottenham, the worst kit for, that, for, for a trophy, well, man. They, they, sing, yes. they sing about Absolutely. us every, every home game when, they, when the players walk out. It's embarrassing. They sing about Gerard yeah, every game as well, be. still, to be fair. It's actually embarrassing. Okay, be. fair dues, fair dues. But there you have it, people. Great week there from KG. 100 I'm not even going to lie, it's probably the best week any individuals had so far this week. So that was a big week. Uh, bigger Allen as well, 94 points. So that's a big week as well, getting the second. So Fantasy League is heating up. But guys, yeah, once look. again, thank you for <laughs> joining points. us. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you got that. You got that. You got that. No credit. You know. No, no, no. Nice, no, no, good, nice, good. But nice four one on one. I've got. Nasty, you know. Yeah. I've got to give. I've got to give nice four one on one the the credit. You know what I mean? I've got to be real. Ninety four one oh one. All right, Cal got ninety. That is big. That is good. That, that is, is big. big. That is big. That is that it's is a good. Oh, oh, so, sorry, guys. I, I like the I like the comment that um that Edward put in. He said Aaron needs to show needs to show passion and desire to climb the league. <laughs> 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 oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, <laughs> you have your moment in it. Moment of have your moment. Maybe I, I do need a bit of a passion, a bit of knee slides, and you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. There was. There. I've got faith that Aaron is going to be able to catch Lewis, but we'll see. And it was. We'll I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Matt is only just teetering above Lewis as well, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But that shaded me, me again. That doesn't make no that, sense, bro, because Cal's behind me. Indirect bombs, bro. <laughs> but yeah, people, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, the description for everyone's channel will be in the description below. Aaron, George, KG, pleasure as always. Appreciate Make sure you lot go always. and subscribe to their channel, guys. Make sure Trust check me. out all their videos. Great content. And obviously, Lewis couldn't make it this week, but make sure you go check out Lewis as well, guys. He will be down there as well. And obviously, we'll be back tomorrow with a preview for the weekend's game. But as always, the Prem Panel Show will be back next week, same time, same place. Come so, on. Matt, if you could take us out, peeps. Big up, everyone, man. See you lot next week. Oh, <laughs>